BSD, the operating system many claim to be the actual world's first open source operating system. Initially called Berkeley Unix, as it was based on the source code of the original Unix developed at Bell Labs, BSD, or Berkeley Software Distribution, is a now discontinued operating system developed and distributed by the Computer Systems Research Group at the University of California, Berkeley, by a team led by Bill Joy in the 1970s. A time where the Vietnam War was coming to an end. The Watergate scandal dominated headlines, leading to President Nixon's resignation. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Disco music was on the rise, and technologically, it was a decade that saw the introduction of email, Pong, the first personal computers, such as the Apple One, and the founding of Microsoft by Bill Gates and Paul Allen. I'm Bill Gates, chairman of Microsoft. All the while, a little thing called Unix was being developed. And to understand BSD, you must understand these early days of Unix, in that although it was proprietary, the earliest distributions of Unix included the source code, allowing researchers and universities to modify and extend Unix. The operating system arrived at Berkeley in 1974 at the request of computer science professor Bob Fabry, a Symposium on Operating Systems Principles committee member where Unix was first presented. To run the system, they bought a PDP-1145, but for budgetary reasons was shared with the mathematics and statistics groups at Berkeley who used RSTS, so Unix only ran on the machine eight hours per day. But thanks to money from the Ingress database project, a larger PDP-1170 was installed the following year. Finally, BSD was able to come to life as a variant of Unix in the late 1970s. At first, BSD was not a clone of Unix, or even a substantially different version of it. It just included some extra features, which were intertwined with the code owned by AT&T, and on a sabbatical from Bell Labs, the research arm of AT&T where Unix was born, and actually where C was developed, but that's a story for another day, Ken Thompson, as a visiting professor at Berkeley, helped to install version 6 Unix on the PDP-1170 and started working on a Pascal implementation for the C-based system. One that graduate students Chuck Haley and Bill Joy improved on by implementing an improved text editor. Other universities became interested in the software Berkeley, and so in 1977, Joy started compiling the first Berkeley software distribution known as 1BSD, which was released on March 9th, 1978. It was an add-on to version 6 Unix rather than a complete operating system in its own right. Some 30 copies were sent out. The second Berkeley software distribution, or 2BSD, released in May of 1979, so just over a year after the release of 1BSD. It included updated versions of the 1BSD software, as well as two new programs by Bill Joy that persist on Unix systems to this day, the V text editor and the C shell. You may know the more popular derivatives of these, Vim, aka V improved, and TCSH, the 10x C shell. Although Bash, a part of the GNU project, has become more widely used as the default shell on many Unix-like systems. Some 75 copies of 2BSD were sent out by Bill Joy. But one year prior, in 1978, Berkeley installed a VAX computer. The port of Unix to this VAX architecture was called Unix 32V. However, this initial version did not leverage the VAX's virtual memory capabilities. Recognizing the limitation, the kernel of 32V underwent significant rewriting to integrate a virtual memory implementation by Berkeley graduate student Ozalp Babaglu. The result was a more comprehensive operating system, 3BSD, also known as Virtual Vax Unix or VM Unix. Released at the end of 1979, 3BSD combined the newly developed kernel, the utilities from 32V, and the 2BSD utilities ported to the Vax. However, the decision was made to transition away from the VAX platform after the release of 4.3 BSD seven years later in June 1986. At that time, the Power 632 platform developed by Computer Consoles Incorporated and codenamed Tahoe seemed promising. 
however, this platform was shortly abandoned by its creators. Despite this, the effort to port 4.3 BSD to Tahoe, resulting in the aptly named 4.3 BSD Dash Tahoe, released in June 1988, and it had a silver lining. It spurred the separation of machine dependent and machine independent code in BSD, significantly enhancing the system's portability. In parallel, the Computer Systems Research Group, or CSRG, at Berkeley also focused on other advancements. They developed an OSI network protocol stack, refined the kernel's virtual memory system, and collaborated with Van Jacobson from LBL to devise new TCP IP algorithms to support the burgeoning internet. And with the growth of the internet technological advancements, software engineering and computer science research being exactly what we deliver to your inbox via our newsletter dev notes, your specialized briefing into this world, tailored specifically for those who are building it, the developers. If you're interested, sign up to our newsletter at devnotesdaily.com, link in description. Up until this point, all versions of BSD used proprietary AT&T Unix code and were therefore subject to a very expensive AT&T software license, anywhere from hundreds of dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the version, intended use, hardware, and time period, which resulted in several outside parties being interested in a separate release of BSD's networking code, developed entirely outside AT&T and would not be subject to the licensing requirement. This led to Networking Release 1, aka Net1, which was made available to non-licensees of AT&T code and was freely redistributable under the terms of the BSD license. It was released in June of 1989. Following the momentum of Net1, BSD developer Keith Bostick proposed that more of BSD's non-AT&T components be released under the same license. To this end, he started a project to recreate most of the standard Unix utilities without using the AT&T code. Within 18 months, all of the AT&T utilities had been successfully replaced. The few AT&T files that remained in the kernel were then removed, and the result was the June 1991 release of networking Release 2, also known as Net2, marking a significant milestone being a nearly complete operating system that was freely distributable. Building upon Net2, two distinct ports of BSD to the Intel 8386 architecture emerged. Notably, this was the same architecture Linus Torvalds used that led him to create the Linux kernel. The first port was the free 386 BSD, developed by William and Lynn Jolitz. The second was the proprietary BSD 386, which was later renamed BSD OS, developed by Berkeley Software Design, or BSDI. While 386BSD was short-lived, it became the initial code for the NetBSD and FreeBSD projects that started soon after. However, BSDI soon found itself in legal trouble with AT&T's Unix System Laboratories, aka USL, subsidiary, which at the time held the copyrights for Unix System 5 and the Unix trademark. In 1992, the USL v. BSDI lawsuit was filed and led to an injunction on the distribution of Net2 until the validity of USL's copyright claims on the source code could be determined. The lawsuit inadvertently slowed development of BSD's free software descendants for nearly two years due to the uncertainty surrounding their legal standing. And during this hiatus, systems based on the Linux kernel, unhindered by such legal disputes, gained traction in a broader user base. The lawsuit was finally settled in January 1994, largely favoring Berkeley. Out of the 18,000 files in the Berkeley distribution, only three had to be removed, while 70 others were modified to include USL copyright notices. A pivotal term of the settlement ensured that USL would not file further lawsuits against either users or distributors of the Berkeley-owned code, especially concerning the forthcoming 4.4 BSD release. A few other derivatives of 4.4 BSD were released, and then in 1995, Berkeley rolled out its final release, 4.4 BSD Lite Release 2. This marked the end of an era, as the CSRG was dissolved and development of BSD at Berkeley ceased. However, the BSD legacy persisted. Several variants, either directly or indirectly based on 4.4 BSD Lite, have been maintained, such as FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, and Dragonfly BSD. 
The permissive nature of the BSD license has allowed many other operating systems, both open source and proprietary, to incorporate BSD source code. Notably, Microsoft Windows used BSD code for its TCP IP implementation and has bundled recompiled versions of BSD's command line networking tools since Windows 2000. Darwin, which forms the foundation of Apple's Mac OS and iOS, is based on 4.4 BSD Lite 2 and FreeBSD. Various commercial Unix operating systems such as Solaris also incorporated BSD code. It's quite amazing, isn't it? Just how impactful BSD has been on the software many of us use and love to this day, 28 years after being discontinued? And to think, if that lawsuit that held up development of the free software descendants of of BSD for nearly two years never happened, BSD could very well be what Linux is today. And to answer the question of was BSD the first complete open source operating system actually, the answer is blurred. BSD became a complete operating system well before Linux in 1979 with the release of 3BSD. And while it was distributed with source code and had a permissive license, it still included proprietary AT&T code, which makes it inconsistent with the modern sense of the term open source. Net1 and Net2 ran into the same issue of proprietary AT&T code, and neither was quite a complete operating system. It wasn't until 386 BSD that we got a complete open source operating system in the BSD family, and that was released on July 14th, 1992, around the same time as GNU Linux, which begs the question, given the combination of GNU tools with the Linux kernel was more of an evolutionary process rather than a single event to determine an exact date in which it became a complete operating system, which was first? Some say the February 3rd, 1992 release of the Manchester Computing Center Interim Linux, created by Owen LeBlanc, others say differently. What do you say? You may say it doesn't matter, and maybe not, but where's the fun in that? Y'all let me know. This story was not to answer that question, but instead to share the story of one of the most influential pieces of software in history, BSD. If you haven't seen The Making of Linux, you can check that out here, right below it, The Making of GNU, and I have two more videos in the works just like this, telling the story of some of the most important software of the past that shaped our present. Not just the software of today, but the entire software development industry. That, by the way, was your indication to subscribe. I hope you truly enjoyed this video and have a newfound appreciation for software and developers of the past.